Okay, Barber World TV, it's your boy Kamal Nuru, aka Zo Mega Millions. You are live at the set at Barber World TV, and as you can see, I'm also the antique barber. You see my collection behind me, and today I will take a journey to Columbus, Ohio, where I'll go to the Barber Museum. I know a lot of you barbers don't know anything about that. It has always been my desire to go to the Barber Museum, and I'm gonna take you along for the ride. I've always collected for many years, and now I'll get to see a real collection. Maybe I'll get a few pieces from my collection. All right, now I'm about to head to the airport. We out here. Hi, I'm Mike Apolli, director of the National Barber Museum, founded by Ed Jeffers. Now watching Barber World TV, I'm your host Kamal Nuru. I'm here with Mike. We're at the National Barber Museum, founded by Ed Jeffers. Right. Okay, so <laughs> Mike, uh, tell us who is Ed Jeffers and what does he mean to this Barber Museum? Ed Jeffers was a uh, well, not only a pillar of the community that he's in, but he was very passionate about barbering. Uh, that was his life. He uh, not only collected things, but he wrote curriculum. He was on the Barber Board. He was on the National Barber Board. He was president. He was tre uh, secretary. Uh, he's well known countrywide, in fact, international. I found that out. I, I personally am getting emails from all over the world from various people that know that we're here. We're the only Barber Museum of this size in the world. There's a lot of small ones, or some of them hooked to uh, museums, but nothing like this. And when was this museum founded? It was founded in 1978. Uh, and uh, Ed, like I say, it was a private collection. It was very small. He used to own this building, so he lived here too. And uh, this was his hobby. So I said a letter of intent stating that the Historical Society would love to take this over if and when you're ready. Okay. Of course, I don't hear anything. And he up and dies on me. He died uh, July 3rd, 2006. So I go to the funeral. Now, he had a very strange family. Okay, He never talked to his sisters. I personally have known him for years, but I have no idea. I know he was divorced, but I have no idea anything about his family at all. So I'm at the funeral home, and I'm trying to figure out, how do I ask the girls what's going to happen with this? So, In a nice way without... Yeah, without, you know, like, hitting around, like, hey, wait a minute. Right. So I'm kind of muffling around there, but then I start walking out, thinking, well, I can always check with them later. As I'm walking out, one of the girls comes up to me and says, don't worry, Mike, we're going to take care of the community. And that's all she said. It was an Ed answer. So I walked away once again confused. I didn't know what they were going to do. Were they going to put it on eBay? Give me a check? Uh, yeah, who knows? We're going to take care of the community, as always said. So it was a few weeks later is when I get the telephone call and saying that uh, the museum will stay in Canal Winchester. So that's when we started the uh, process of. Uh, Taking over. How many, if you can uh, just guesstimate, different artifacts does the museum have? Well, we had to take an, a, an appraisal uh, when they transferred this to us. And uh, the appraisal, of course, was, was low, but still, the uh, artifacts itself, we had over 750 lots. Okay, and now when I say lots, we're talking about 
Uh, a lot could be 50 items, 100 items. It just, you know, like say chairs. Chairs would be one lot. One lot. Okay. How, how, so that's for instance, roughly how many barber poles do you own? We have 71 barber poles. That I can answer correctly. Um, we have probably close to a thousand shaving mugs. Is that the largest of your lot? Uh, no, because I have razors that's also in the thousands. Okay. Uh, I probably have close to 2,500 to 3,000 straight razors. I have a box that I tried to pick up one day. It was, it was a box about this size, okay? I went to pick it up. The thing must have weighed 50 or 60 pounds. I, mean, well, I opened it up. It's full of safety razors just thrown in there. There were over 400 and some of those. Okay, and uh, this is just stuff that we don't have on display. This is back in the uh, in the storage area. So over the years, how have uh, you and Ed acquired your collection? Was it through purchases, was it through donations, or a combination? Well, for Ed, it was probably a combination. Uh, he bought some stuff, but a lot was given to him. Me, it's all been donations. I, I ask for things out there. Just recently, in fact, this week, uh, we uh, uh, had a couple from Wisconsin that called and says, it's time to get rid of Dad's collection of mugs and razors. Well, they brought this down, and uh, I even offered to meet them halfway. Now, they, they drove down here and wanted to see the museum, and they brought me over 350 mugs, and I have and two cases of razors and brushes. I have no idea. We're still looking at the stuff. Wow. Yeah. What's your uh, schedule like, and do you have a busy season or a busy day of the week? Uh, not so much a busy day or a season. This, this goes on all year. We're, right now, we're open by appointment. Okay, we get a lot of schools through here, the barber schools. So uh, when they're started, when they start studying the history of barbering, this is when I like to bring them in so that they can, you know, learn. Uh, but uh, being open by appointment only, I get calls anytime. We're open seven days a week, you know, and uh, so it's uh, it's it's fascinating. It's interesting. Now, once we we're going to be moving to a new building, hopefully in the near future here. And uh, we're going to try to have some uh, uh, regular hours. So we will be open probably seven days a week because we're going to be in conjunction with a, another museum, which is going to be an automotive museum. And if he's open seven days a week, well, we're going to have to be too. Okay. And since you mentioned the, the strong possibility of moving into a new location, you also mentioned the fact that you need to raise some funds to make this happen. So let's talk about that and how can barbers all over America help? Well, like I tell uh, the barbers just in Ohio here, uh, you know, we have 9,500 barbers. If, if you'd give me one or two dollars a piece, I mean, there's 20,000 right there, okay? There are 385,000 barbers licensed in the United States. One buck would get me into the new building real easy. Uh, we're trying to raise about a quarter of a million dollars, two, two, between 220 and 250 thousand. So it's it's a pretty enough uh, nut to crack, pretty hard nut to crack. So uh, I uh, I'm putting a plea out there, you know, as far as raising money. Uh, we're a nonprofit. That's another thing. We're nonprofit. I don't get paid. This is all volunteer. Uh, so, and all the other people that work here are volunteer. We're part of the Historical Society, and uh, it's uh, uh, labor of love, yeah. if you want to call it that. So, uh, any monies that do come in, we're a 501c3, so they can be written off. Uh, we're going to not only talk to the individuals and the barbers and that, but eventually start hitting corporate. And uh, if uh, there are any corporations out there, we'd love to hear from you. So, so tell the people uh, where and where they can send it. If they want to send a donation, where would they send it? Okay. Uh, where would they write the check to? <laughs> okay. The check would be written to the National Barber Museum. Okay. okay. Not to me, but to the National Barber Museum. And uh, right now it's P.O. Box 15, 
Canal Winchester, that's two words, C-A-N-A-L, Winchester, Ohio, 43110. And uh, like I say, any donation is uh, tax deductible, and we'll send you a letter uh, stating that uh, after, the, you know, with your donation. And what's the time frame to raise these funds? ASAP. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that, barbers? All you barbers out there, Barber World TV. They need to raise a quarter of a million dollars. Just think about it. I know there's. I spoke with the the state board examiner in New York, and there's over ten thousand registered licensed barbers in New York, and there's probably twenty thousand out of non-licensed. So just think, if every barber sends in a dollar, two dollars. You do your lowest tip that you probably ever could get. <laughs> Just send one one of your tips one day of the week to the National Barber Museum to save and preserve and move the museum into a bigger and better facility. And if you haven't been here, make it your business to get down here. You, they say if you want to know where you're going, you got to know where you've been. So you have to know the, the history of the barber industry. And yeah, what does it cost to visit the museum? Okay, right now uh, we have uh, it's uh, a five dollar charge for adults, four dollars for uh, seniors, and three dollars for students. Okay, but the students that come through here, like for the Barber Colleges, they come through for free. Uh, we also ask for a donation, and I found that when people come through here, I give them the price list, and I also say for a donation. I find out that. The donation usually adds more up than and if I were to charge exactly five dollars or four or three. Uh, so a lot of them, instead of putting a five in there, they'll put a ten or a twenty. I even had one guy slip me a hundred dollar bill one time. Well, speaking of donations, what's the largest donation you received? Well, uh, probably at this point, thirty thousand, uh, and that was strictly given to us uh, for the actual move itself, to take the artifacts and move them down. So it was an incentive for other companies and people to say, okay, I'm doing this, you work on the other end and uh, yeah, try so to... Gillette, Bic, Angus, Ulster, <laughs> the artist, Wall, <laughs> the artist I would really ex uh, hope that you guys would send a check here and, and, and to, to make this move happen. <laughs> uh, Barbara Saul's another one. In fact, they're home office. Marvy, everyone. <laughs> yes. yes, Bob. Bob Marvy, please send us. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about one of your most uh, interesting uh, visits that may be a, a great story. One of the great stories of a visit here. Yeah. <laughs> We've had a lot. <laughs> yeah, somebody with a unique story. <laughs> well, we, we've had Tokyo Television come in here uh -huh. and did an hour show. Uh, we've had the um, uh, Antique Road Show, which has hidden treasures. They did an interesting one. In fact, uh, the way the show closes is the, uh, the host is sitting in a chair, and I... Uh, I put the drape, the, uh, the, cape, the cape on him and prepare to shave, okay, as he's talking. And he looks at me and he says, I'm sure you've done many of these. Well, I'm, I'm holding the razor and saying, no, this is my first. So the show closes with him yelling, oh, no. <laughs> All right, Mike, thank you for your time. Thank you. It was I my really pleasure enjoyed. giving me the history of this business that I love. And uh, we'll be back, you know, definitely. And we'll do all we can to help you make that move. Please do. And uh, everybody out there, please donate. That's right. Just go on $1. $1. That's <laughs> all I need. $385. That would great. Yeah. On the next episode of Barber World TV, I sit down with Delore, owner of YNZ Barber Supply. We'll see what it takes to go door to door and deliver barber supplies across New York City. This episode of Barber World TV is sponsored by the New York City Barber Battle 5, War of the Kings. Stay tuned.